Hello YouTube, welcome to Ground Forks. This is episode 50 of the Interplanetary Voyage of Exploration. So yes, we are celebrating 50th episode. And what better way to celebrate it than to discover a new planet? And by discover, I mean visit, enter its sphere of influence. And it is only fitting because our Moho, little Moho probe, powered by near future, is scheduled to basically have a Moho encounter. And truth be told, I have kind of goofed that one a little bit because I kind of missed the encounter by a few days. I don't know why I didn't get the alarm. But then again, that is why we have possibility to actually have a pretty huge amount of Delta V so we can fix orbit and we can uh, grant it expand large vo amounts of fuel to actually still reach Moho. So that's kind of the plan. So now fiddling with the maneuver note until we get the Moho encounter. Hmm. Fiddling little by little and soon enough we should get that encounter a little bit more I think. <coughs> and yes, here we go. There we are, Moho Encounter. And that is supposed to happen in 56 minutes from now. And now I'm just fiddling with the maneuver nodes to make sure that I get as good encounter as possible. That's good enough. Okay. <coughs> Mm, so, mm, time to just hold maneuver node and execute it. Slowly coasting to until the um, flight computer does its thing of turning our probe in the desired direction. And... Oh yes, the battery has short-circuited. Then it strikes again. Fortunately enough, we have accounted for it and this probe has redundancy. So, yeah, well... Crippled a little, but not by any means done. And this is a very beautiful screeny. I'm considering to use it as a screenshot. Well, think about it. And given that this is quite a long burn, it's only fair that I put in the 4 times times acceleration until we actually execute this, because, I mean, given our thrust to weight, which is 0 0.13, it would take forever. So, burning ever so slowly. Okay, 3 minutes to maneuver node. These near-future technologies really have uh, very nice, cool, innovative engines, but abysmally low thrust. So, but yeah, good fuel economy. So they're not really made for elaborate and big probes that I keep sending, so... Yeah, well, what can you do? Okay. Almost there. Almost. 300 meters per second, 200 meters per second, and I can actually decelerate a little bit this 4 time physics time warp, just to make sure that we don't miss our maneuver node, and here it comes gracefully, and here we go. Beautiful. That leaves us with a very nice Moho encounter that is supposed to happen in the next 14 days. So before our curb into Joule and curb into Eve and Eve to curb in Windows. Awesome. So I guess we'll just time accelerate until we get to it. Toggling the SAS and let us dance. So. A little bit warning in terms of that my probe is running out of battery, which is kind of confusing why it would, because it has plenty of uh, charge, but then again, you never know. 
<coughs> yes, and here can I move just this window a little bit so that we can see. Dang it. Okay. Mm, burning or accelerating until that window because it's not that far and yeah. Sometimes we can spoil ourselves a little bit. Okay, coming to the sphere of influence change. Ever so slowly. 15 minutes window or 10 minutes window to the sphere of influence change and we will be passing by Moho. Exciting. Okay, and come on, yes, perfect. But lots and lots of science to be collected. Gravity scan, magnetometer scan, multispectral analysis, orbital radio telescope, and radio plasma wave scan. So I'm just kind of tempted to actually send all of them because they yield the same amount of science transmitted and recovered, so really no big point in uh, kind of keeping them for ourselves. Better to share them with the Kerbal world that we get some findings from Moho. Ho ho ho! Greetings from Moho! Okay, let's do a little bit time acceleration until all of our science equipment is reset for the next batch of experiments and then we want to see that ensure that we are basically passing very close to Moho we want our periapsis to be let's say within 10,000 sort of ish because we want to get low over Moho so I'm kind of fiddling a little bit with the maneuver notes to ensure that we get close enough periapsis and that we will be able to collect some sweet sweet low moho science or in space uh, above moho and then our friend dengit decides to strike again and with that being said it is struck the one place where it knows we cannot defend and that's the fuel tanks meaning our delta v will be slowly bleeding off until the point it reaches zero. So, rather than putting it off, I have decided to actually execute the plan maneuver and lower our periapsis and then we will see where we stand. Initially, I was hoping to be able to uh, burn retrograde at the periapsis and get this uh, probe captured around Moho but it seems by the amount of the fuel that's leaking that we will barely be able to push our periapsis down to some 8,000-ish and pass beside it and after that this probe will essentially be a dead stick. So yeah, well not dead, it will be able to communicate but no more gas. So. And that's also the fact we don't have a Kerbal besides, which could actually repair it. So, yeah. <laughs> nice move, dang it. I didn't see that one coming. But for me it's kind of <coughs> silly because, I mean, in real life I guess you could, would be able, if you have multiple tanks chained together, you should be able to have some sort of bypass or something, I guess. I'm not really an expert on rocket design, but then again, it would make sense. So, okay, gravity scan, store this data, and let us time accelerate until we... I'm also doing the review data because I'm thinking, well, if the fuel leaks, we don't care. We need to send this data anyway, so <coughs> it won't help us much. So, yeah. If it was electric charge or something, we could take some action on it, but once the fuel drains out, that's it. And it will drain out as soon as we reach Moho. Apparently. Just looking around. Hi Moho, and our fuel is... <laughs> slowly draining. Doing gravity scan. 
well, at least we will be able to collect some more science in the space near Moho. I guess that's as good as you can get it. The next thing what we would need to do is to be landing on Moho, but this one we cannot even do that. So I'm quickly clicking as I can, just w being careful not to lose connection back to the KSC and transmitting all the data that I can. And this is a little bit time acceleration because, yeah, come on, nobody wants to go via Moho so slowly. So transmitting as much data as possible. And as soon as the <laughs> my science alert pops up, I'm kind of playing, you know, whack-a-mole with the <laughs> available experiments as listed in the in the um, my science alert mod. So now I'm just resetting the experiment. As we are flying over the Moho surface, this is a very nice screenshot. I might consider it. It will definitely be a candidate. We'll see which one we use, actually. Atmospheric cannot, scan cannot be done. Fine. RPWS, nothing. Okay. It seems that we have harvested our bounty of science around Moho. And it's only fitting that we escort this little fella out of... Moho Sphere of Influence. Oh, some more science. Cool. Let's see if we do have connection. We don't have connection to the KSC, so we have to wait a little bit until the KSC comes back from the horizon. In the meantime, we can look and appreciate the beauty and silence of us going and passing by Moho. Apart from me, obviously, yapping here. So, okay, we have re-established the connection after short radio silence and transmitting the sweet, sweet science. So, I think <coughs> there is not much more that we can do for these probes, sadly. Except maybe if we accidentally pass another biome on the exit route from Moho. So, let us just time accelerate a little bit and see if there's anything more that it will be coming into play. So, finding a nice angle, do a time warp, and as we slowly drift away from Moho, thanking it for a lots and, inf and lots of science that we have collected, which we will certainly use well in our next experiment. Okay, and pretty soon we will be leaving Moho's sphere of influence, I guess. And yeah. Okay, so let's see. 721 science, which is quite nice. And uh, let's see what shall we use our newfound science for. Mm. I was thinking advanced man personnel space flight or fairings I don't need, capacitors I don't need, advanced energy, yes I need it but not right now, thrusters, plasma, no, 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 <clears throat> definitely not yet. These would be cool though, more near future, but we need more powerful stuff to do this and yeah so let's see even larger tanks well this I could definitely use bigger thrusters I could also use but I only have 271 science oh very large gas storage things those are just huge man okay uh, advanced stability I'm thinking almost to get advanced turbojets because that leads us to rapiers yes Oh dear, 750 more science to go to rapiers. And I am kind of wanted to unlock the turbojets because I wanted to go for rapiers and advance our SSTO program a little bit further. So, <clears throat> with that being said, let us now roll out the second monstrosity. In the previous episode we have launched our jewel 
um, Jewel Exploration 1, which was the uh, one that had um, communication satellites. And this one is the one that is even more complex, that contains science, that is ScanSat, together with the Impactor probe ones. So, this is also, I think, 10 times times acceleration is the highest that I could get because I was playing in one frame per second or between one and three frames per second. Sort of like a PowerPoint slideshow if you, if you get my drift. So, asparagus staging at work. <coughs> Dropping the stages as we climb towards the periapsis. And since you see that this uh, design is actually six... F uh, liquid fuel boosters at the bottom which we have dropped in sequence and we are already at 40,000 uh, with the apoapsis of 60 so that is much much better than our initial design um, that we <coughs> that is not the mark 2b and as you can see I'm burning also using RCS because every little ounce of thrust counts and I have went a little bit overboard with amount of RCS that I've put on this ship, so I figured, well, why the hell not use it anyway? Popping the fairing and enabling the communitron, and now I'm just continuing to burn until we get to orbit. <clears throat> I'm slowly leaning down because I want to keep ideally in the 110 or 20 by 110 or 20 orbit. So... <clears throat> thrusting ever so slowly with both our Rhino and our CS. Our flight engineer is a little bit confused. <clears throat> it has no idea what our um, ves vessels like Delta V parameters are. So yes, <clears throat> and I'm thrusting just, okay, 102 by 87. The main point, ladies and gentlemen, we are in orbit. So, I'm gonna fix this orbit a little bit, and yeah, as you can see, <coughs> my frame rate here tanked a little bit. Or actually, I slowed down the time acceleration because I figured I'm in the orbit now, I don't need it. Well, yeah, this was still pretty good. I think this is like three times times acceleration compared to what I was playing with. So yeah, decent. Um, okay, 100 by 100, that's pretty much satisfactory. Let's just rename it, jo Jewel Exploration to Science, and onwards back to the Space Center. Okay, now that we have taken care of that launch, Let's see what else we can do. Okay, um, let us just time accelerate and recondition the launch pad. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, okay, so let us roll out the second in our chain of ships. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're going to roll out that... Or actually, no, it's not the Mark to be, so we'll scrap that one. Well, that brings us to the end of this episode. Uh, like if you like the episode. And for more KSC con KSP content, hit that subscribe button. More episodes will be coming out soon. Thank you again for watching. This is Grumforks, signing off.